and I just got the notification. Yes, sir. We're live on Facebook. How y'all doing, Facebook? Thank y'all for tuning back in to Get Straight To It podcast, where we're live today with yours Brother. truly, Antoine Hill, on the Amen. side of uh, let's get into prayer right quick so we can get straight to it. I know we're a little earlier, but a couple minutes ain't going to hurt nobody. Yeah, uh, Father God, right now, we thank you, Father, for this divine opportunity that you have set aside for us to be able to lock arms, me and Brother Antoine, Father, to share his testimony and to be able to reach those that feel like they need, they need more than the church or they will never find their way to the church, Father. I thank you, Lord. I ask that you open up the ears and the hearts for those that need to receive this, Father God. We come against any works of the enemy right now that's trying to create distraction or discord between the airways of this podcast, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for the interview that's about to go forth, Father, and let it praise you, let it glorify you, let us decrease and you increase in us, Father, that they see you in us. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Man, all right, bro. And with that, with that being said, bro, we can dive. We can get straight to your your testimony, bro. Let them know who you are. That I mean, most of them already know, but. Man. So, I'm brother Antoine Hill, man. Um, I'm a part of this ministry, Kingdom Music Ministries, man. And um, my testimony. Every time I'm asked to give my testimony, it's always like a. Um, I feel like there's like several parts of my testimony, and so. In that, I started realizing like what, what the main part of my testimony is. Well, first of all, I was born in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So no, I am not from Texas. <laughs> I live in Texas now. I've been living in Texas. Me and my family moved out here about four years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, but for sure four years ago. Uh, and I've been living here ever since. Well, I was born in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, kind of regular, you know what I mean? Um, I, I hate to say regular, but but typical story when you're in, like from the hood. When everybody's from the hood, it's kind of the same thing. We all yeah. came up yeah. Kool-Aid and ramen and <laughs> all that, the same old stuff, same type of struggles. Nobody was balling. Nobody was balling out of control. In fact, most of us, you know, we kind of lived in, um, you know, you know, poverty so to speak not you know not not poor or homeless but we just have much right so kind of the typical story when it comes to stuff like that and uh you know my mom was a young mom uh my dad the young dad when well, my actual well, my biological father he uh you know I don't want to talk bad about him on here because um you know we had a chance to reconcile um yeah. years but you know he just wasn't in the picture you know, he blames my mom, my mom blames him, same typical, you know, story. Uh, but my stepfather, then when I was about uh, six, okay, five or six, and um, he's in my life my whole life, even though know, even to this day. Um, so, you know, that was kind of how I was uh, uh, raised. Um, but my mom and my, my dad were both, um, you know, heavily involved gaming. Oh, so, wow. okay. yeah. So that dynamic of having gang members for parents is kind of different yeah. because yeah all of your uncles are your uncles they're all gang members as well right they're just all the you know and so that was kind of like that was my life like you know um and so so god is so good because because this is a vital part of my testimony was at six years old my stepfather stepping in his mom was um um heavily involved in church okay wow so although my step man and he's a gang member my mom's a gang member uh my grandmother was like yo you going to church with me on sunday Shout out grandma. right so yeah. monday through saturday was everything but church and then sunday was the one to church okay. you know and, and i enjoy being at my grandma's house so i would spend the weekend at her house you know way, under her rules and different things like that you know and so that was kind of like the norm of my life uh like monday through you know you know saturday uh you know being at home i mean most of my houses got shot up wow. uh, uh you know i've had some super crazy experiences with that um i've seen gang fights i've seen shootouts i've been involved in um, a lot of 
crazy stuff now that I even sit here and even think about it even now. A lot mm-hmm. of the things I saw at a young age was just stuff that I was around. And but to be honest with you, it was just kind of a normal thing. Um, and raised up in that. So guess what? You're automatically uh, you're automatically affiliated as you get older. Affiliated you, by association. You become a part of that, right? So my whole life was uh, gang um, activity, gang affiliation, gang everything, right? I was so... I I was so uh in, in, so in 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 uh, influenced by that that I wouldn't even like use a red lighter to light my cigarette. Uh-huh. But, yeah. You know, I would nothing red, right? So like this right here, this little thing, I wouldn't even have this. Would have never had it in your closet. Never would have had it in my closet. Uh, so that was that. But so so when so that's like my upbringing. But then when we get to my teenage years, when you start to develop, um, those were. Um, to be honest, I just was a real like, um, this is I, I found out that this was the root of everything because I've been walking with the Lord for so long. I've been able to uh, evaluate my life and where I am um, that um, I'm able I was able to see that my mom's anger and the stuff and the violence and the things like that, to be honest, as a kid, like people can say whatever they want, but we're not made to be that way. Yeah, a kid, innocent by nature. Right. Uh, he might have sneaky ways or she might have sneaky ways, but we're innocent by nature. And to be honest with you, we just want to be children. But when you're yeah. forced, then, um, you know, you're you're going to have either I'm all in or I'm all out or I'm in between. Right. I, I was right. more in because there was a part. And I think it, and I attribute it to my grandmother because there was a part that was like, man, but there's something different. Like God, like there's a God. Right. And there's something that God wants. And then I'm and then the other side is like, yeah, but you got to be a gangster. Right. So I would go through these different things. Right. And um, so I just so as a teenager, just to cope with the with things that was going on around me. And I was like super like um, my I had really low self-esteem. Like I just thought that I wasn't handsome, um, that I wasn't enough. I wasn't lovable. Uh, I was depressed about it. I was like doing all, all these different things mentally. I was angry about everything. You know, we didn't have nothing. So kids would like talk about me. Ah, oh, look what you got on. And then, you know, that would lead to me them in the mouth. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? Because I don't have no defense. Like, what can I, I say? I got this, but I got this. Yeah, I don't got <laughs> Right, right. So right. that's for a whole bunch of, I mean, I fought, 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 fought. And most right. of us talked about what I had on. So I got to a certain age and um, I tried. Uh, uh, marijuana for the first time. I tried weed for the first time, and um, that was like my escape. Yeah, right? I was high. It took me away from everything mentally. Uh, yeah. Long enough, right? To the yeah. point where I would start. I, I, you know, fast forward over time, I started doing pills. I started doing lean. I started doing X. I started doing all the different everything that it graduated. Yeah, because I was just like, yo, to be high for a little bit. Helps me escape these thoughts of depression. Helps me escape these thoughts of suicide. Helps me escape this anxiety, this uncertainty. My it gives me confidence where the places that I lack confidence, it you know, but you know, you know, you do ecstasy and you feel like you can do whatever, right? So those different things, right? So those different things was just things that I would use to cope with um, just life in general. But the reality was, um, there was just a little boy in there that was just like, man, I don't really want. I just want, I want to be happy. Right. I want to be free. I want to have joy. I want to have peace. And um, although my grandmother made me go to church, I never really truly grasped who Jesus was. Come on now. And then, um, you know, so I went through that. Um, I, then, then it went from me being, seeing the shootouts to being involved in shootouts to me being involved in Rob, me being involved in stealing and, I mean, I did, I can only want to name everything. I did a lot of stuff that yeah, just right, was, right. it was, uh, you it was know, it, problems for you. it was just crazy, man. I, you know, you, you, you get on these certain drugs and you, you don't, you don't feel like you can ever get caught and nothing can right. ever stop you down and just do whatever. And right. it's just kind of us. Um, and, but the react, but this is the part that people don't tell you about being on drugs and, um, you know, going, dealing with these thoughts is that, after your high comes down, the thoughts are still there. Right. They don't go away. In fact, they can start to intensify because right. you're used to um, numbing these thoughts with drugs, 
um, um, I wasn't a big alcohol drinker, but alcohol every once in a while, um, you, they, they actually intensify your thoughts, man, because you, now you, I, I smoke so much that I don't feel normal, not high. Right. Right. And so that builds up ir- irritation and thing, you know what I mean? So all these different things. Um, and I, then I just remember like the suicidal thoughts just started getting deeper and deeper. And, um, I started to realize like, I didn't really have, I worked, I worked a job, you know, I, you know, you know, but I started to realize like, I never really, I don't really have nothing financially. Um, I'm not a good father. Cause I had my first daughter at 18. Um, oh, wow. when I was still in high school. Um, uh, it was my last year of school. Uh, um, I'm not a good, really good father because I can't really provide like that. Um, I'm not a really good son. Um, I'm mad at, you know, I'm not a really good brother. I'm mad at everybody. I'm not a really great friend. I don't really love myself. I really don't know what love is. And I'm just struggling with all these areas of my life because the reality is I've never really gotten to grow, uh, live a normal life. It was just, you know what I mean? Um, so I remember I was like 19 years old depressed out of my mind um really really dealing with these suicidal thoughts where I was like I had decided in my mind that I was going to kill myself that night and and I ended up and I tell this actually told this testimony a few different times I I tell it a lot when I go minister but uh I really was like the enemy had convinced me into believing that okay you said you was going to kill yourself so you got like the enemy like I can't you can't be a liar you can't go back on your word you said you was gonna do it do it and um that night that night I just so happened to walk into a church that I went by all the time and I and I seen this church now you know the, the awesome thing about God is that my grandmother was always that one person that would be like you go to church on Sunday I'm gonna plant this in you and I'll plant that in you so I had some word in me right yeah. there was you know I didn't know like it wasn't like I didn't know who Jesus was, and then all of a sudden he was introduced. But I went into this church because I believed I seen I seen God in my grandmother's life, like for real. Right. And so I remember being there with this mental. I'm going through these things mentally. I'm depressed. I'm everything, and I'm just no good to nobody. I'm broke. I'm just all of this thing. And I was like, man, I'm gonna go into this church, and I'm gonna go sit in here, and um. Man, if God don't show up tonight, then tonight's going to be the night that I end my life. And um, I don't care who you are. And if you've never dealt with suicidal thoughts, then they'll, they'll, they'll never understand it. And that's OK. But when you have these thoughts, it's some of the scariest thoughts that you've ever had because right. you don't know what's next. Right. And you're battling in your mind. So I sat in the back of the church and I literally cried through the service. Yeah. And I just cried and cried because I'm scared. I, I'm scared to do it, but I said I'm gonna do it, so I gotta do it because the enemy's convinced me to. And I'm going through all these different things, and I'm thinking about my daughter, and I'm and I'm like, man, I'm gonna miss her. But then I'm like, but well, she's better off without me. Um, and I'm thinking about my, and then I'm thinking about my girlfriend, um, who's my wife now, and I'm like, man, I really love her, and she's like the best thing that's happened to me, and she's like such a good person. But I think that I bring her down more than anything. I'm not great to her. I'm cheap, much cheaper. Is that and so everything that everybody that I thought of it was like the enemy was telling me yeah but this is what you mm-hmm. this is the value that you add to them or this is what you take from them right. and so, um that's the war in my mind the whole time I'm sitting in the service crying my ball in my eyes I'll sit in the back of the service and um people are coming handing me tissues and stuff and I'm just having a hard hard time and, and, and then, you knew nobody at this church um, yeah, I, I, kn- I knew of a few people okay. be- because of this, because I tell the story and I'm like, I didn't know anybody at the church, but that's not true. That's not, I wasn't, I'm not trying to lie about that part, but I, 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 I forgot about the part that there was some people in there that knew me yeah. because of all the times my grandmother had made me go to church. Okay. All right. Although this was a different church, these churches were kind of affiliated with each other, okay. right? Yeah. Um, so there was some people in there that knew me, but not like on a personal level like that. Like they just knew who I was. They see me with my grandmother. They knew my grand. They definitely knew my grandma. Yeah. They see me with my mother and stuff like that. So, so I really was alone. 
Um, there was maybe sprinkled in there some people who might knew who I was by my face and my grandmother, but that was really it. And um, we started preaching. Um, now the preacher, the preacher knew who I was. Okay. He didn't know me personally, like, but he knew who I was because of my grandmother. And they began to preach. And um, everything he was preaching about was just everything about me. And although he knew me, he did not know me on this level to be knowing all these different things that he was talking right. about. And he's just hitting it back to back to back. And at one point I remember, and I don't know if this is the same service or not, cause it's like a blur. I, I was on a lot of drugs back then. I can't remember. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know if it's the same service or a different service, but that preacher was preaching at another, serv at another service or this one, I don't know, but he pointed to me and was like, Antoine, God wants to blah, 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 right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm thrown off, right? But anyway, that's happening this night and it's everything's just like bam 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 and um and I, it just really for me it was like oh god hears me yeah that was like my first moment where i felt like god had heard what i was going through what i was struggling with what i was dealing with and he wanted me to know that he loved me wow and that broke me down even more and then I just remember, uh, I know I'm, I'm and the, the bad thing about this is I mix services together because I just was really like on a lot of drugs back then. I can't, yeah. but I remember at the end of this service, um, I asked, um, a pastor, I told, uh, it wasn't the pastor, the preacher was a pastor that was there. I told him, what, what do I do? I really right. want, I really want this, but I'm, I bring no value. I add no value. And he, all he said to me was, man, God just is, is telling you to stand, yeah. right? And I always say, no, and that might not mean a lot to a whole lot of people, but to me at that particular season of my life, it meant a lot to me. Come I knew what God was saying. Yeah. Um, because I knew in my heart of hearts that God had called me to something, but I just didn't know what to do. And it was like God was saying, look, just stand, start walking, and I'll do the rest. Um, but that was my surrender to god um and um i had like moments where i backslid and different things like that um and you know uh but i, I it was it was the seed planted because i didn't want to take my life anymore like right. those those thoughts would come and i'd be like nah like i know god told me different and yeah. then th thanks that things were officially over for me when i went to jail oh. i went to and I, it was only like 15 days but that was a <laughs> Enough days. Yeah. Uh, because up to that point, I was still getting high. But right. that 15 day, you can't get high in jail. Right. And maybe you can, but I'm not that deep entrenched with different people to know where to get. <laughs> yeah. And it's 15 days, bro. I'm not messing that up. 15 <laughs> days to get out. Yeah. You know, I didn't even belong in there in the first place. Right. So 15 days of God, like, I literally laid in my bunk one day. With my hands on my chest, I'm laying there getting ready to go to sleep, and God's like, now nah, I can talk to you. Man. And it was like, dang. And God spoke to me every single day that I was in jail. Every day. Came out on fire. Ready to get out. I was um like holding Bible studies in there before we got out, before I got out. Um, I was given a this is I'm, I'm getting to the end of my testimony. Uh I was, I met a guy in there who knew who my dad was. Okay. And this guy was a big time drug dealer from my city. And he was like, yo, you found out who my dad was? He says, yo, man, that's your dad. Yo, check this out. Here's my number. I get out in three months. Call me. And I'm going I'm, to hit you off or whatever you want. I don't want no money. I, your dad's just been there for me for, for all of this. I'm going to hit you off or whatever you want. I'm going to set you up. Yeah. And so I have this number. And I'm now I'm doing Bible studies. Right. He's already off. I get done with the, the Bible studies. I'm getting out. I get out. I still have this number. I looked at this number every day, bro. After those, when I knew that he had got out. And I'm looking at these numbers. I'm looking at and I'm to the point where I'm dialing the number and then hanging yeah. up. Oh, so, yeah. And then every, and so then one day I looked at the number, I ripped it up, threw it away. And a week later, maybe two weeks later, I don't want to lie, uh, him 
And I think it was like, I want to say, if you go back and look at the thing, it was like 68 other people from Indiana all the way to Texas were arrested on federal drug wow. charges. And it was over with. They was getting everybody small fries, everything, everybody got. Well, and God had his hand over you. That was it for me, though. That was like, okay, God, God's looking out for me. The least I can do is whatever this means that he wants me to do. Right. And I was like, let's do it. And I just started walking and slow. He got rid of the weed. He got rid of the drugs. He got rid of everything. Slowly but surely, he got me a job. That I, It was just so many different things. Okay, There's fine. a side of the testimony, but, but I'd be going, talking forever if I gave everything. <laughs> but yeah. that, uh, all, that, all, that was it for me. Like I, I, I had that night at the church. And then I was kind of, you know, still dibbling, dabbling. And then I had that night with with jail. I mean, that day with the jail. And that was enough for me. And I was like, all right, God, I hear you. Where you want me at? I surrender. And it's been a wrap ever since. It's been trials and tribulations because that's just a part of life. Right. Uh, but even through all of that, I haven't walked back. I haven't walked away from him. So I'm grateful for that. Man, that's good. And were, were you making music before or did you? I was. I was making music in the world, secular music. Okay. Uh, I was nice. I ain't going to lie. I could rap. But for me, it was like I could rap. I only wanted to get on tracks with cats to show them that I was better than them. Oh, wow. It yeah. was this ego thing out there oh yeah 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 it was never like oh we're gonna blow up and go to the top although you know i feel like we were some of the best doing it at the time me yeah. and a couple of brothers but i just really was like yo let me get on the track and just show everybody i'm better and it just really was like that was just what i was i was like a freestyle king like i could freestyle forever for hours right. and then, um I gave my life to Christ and it was like, it was a rap for music. I was done with music. Uh, that was it. I was like, I'm, I'm sold out for the Lord. I don't want nothing to do with music no more. Right. So yeah. when, how long did you go in that process of not doing music? Was, was it because you didn't want to do music because the Lord told you to, or was it because it opened doors that you didn't want to open anymore? I didn't want to do music because of, um, first of all, I didn't know that you could, do christian rap music okay i had heard some before but um most of it wasn't good the only really good christian um music before was with the gospel gangsters right God was, they were way before their time you can literally pull a gospel gangster song up off of youtube from 10 12 13 years ago and they are on par with cats that's rapping right now that's how far ahead of their but other than that, I hadn't really heard much. Like I heard T Bone, he was cool. But I thought T Bone was cool. Um, but like some of the other stuff was just like it just wasn't my thing. And I was like preaching. I was like, nobody relates. Like the only gospel gangsters the only ones. Like right. and so for me, it was uh uh I just didn't, I just was like, I didn't and I didn't care about the music like that. Right. I cared about where I was spiritually, that I just needed Jesus, and that's all. Mm -hmm. And so I remember one day somebody pulled up to the church and they got the, their, they 15. <laughs> I know what you're about to say because I watched the interview with you when you yeah. shared it. I was out laughing, bro. Yeah, they was banging, it was bumping. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, bro, you bugging. You pulled up to the church. <laughs> and he like, nah, he like, get in the car, check it out. And I, I ride in right around with him and um, it ends up being Lecrae. Okay. Uh, uh, Jesus music was the first song I heard where I was like, yo, I was like, no, this is fire. Right. And um, I was like, yo, I can rap for the Lord then. I ain't even know that. Right. So I, went, I wrote my first ever Christian, like, yo, I'm, and I, and I ended up that dude, he rapped for the Lord and he introduced me to another dude that rapped for the Lord. Now that, that dude that introduced me, um, he's back, he like backslidden actually out into the world but the other dude ended up becoming a pastor and everything so it's like it's pretty cool but yeah. i wrote my first day and i was like yo and i read it and i was like this is garbage <laughs> it was garbage because i this is why i knew because this is why i always say like yo you either all in or you ain't right. i knew that it was so street um laced that it was 
was not something that could actually be used uh, for the kingdom. Right. I mean, I, there's different level, but I knew that this wasn't good. It wasn't right? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying just like cliche things over and over because I did I never rap for the Lord before, and so uh, I remember God telling me like I remember God saying put the music down, right? And I oh, all right. Because there was nothing that God would tell me to do that I wouldn't do. I put, and I put the music down. And I fasted, prayed, read, served in every single area that you can think to serve. Ushering, shoveling snow, cutting grass, cleaning the church, uh, uh, even singing in the choir if they needed me to. I did anything that was needed to be to help grow um, right. church and the, and the beast and to serve. I did that for two years straight. I ain't touch a I ain't touch a beat. And this I was all while you're in Fort Wayne? Yeah, that was all while I was in Fort Wayne. I didn't touch a beat. I didn't write a verse. Nothing. None. I just was just serving because I wanted to grow. Like my desire was to get discipled, was to be held accountable, was to grow, and was to serve. And that'd be like the crazy thing. Like when cats just be like, I gave my life to Christ. I'm getting ready to start rapping. I be bugged out when I hear that a lot of times. Yeah, because, we're, gonna, we're gonna get to touch on that because I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. so so but so so I did that's all I did um for two years and then um and then I met Brian. I met y'all met out there in Fort Wayne or y'all met yeah. in oh, Fort wow. Wayne. Okay. In Fort, uh Monica had been saying that she wanted me to meet her boyfriend or whatever and i was like i don't really care about me how, how, how was that encounter uh because i mean that's monica's what little sister or big sister little sister she's my oh, little so sister. How, that i mean you're serving at the time flesh didn't arise or what uh nah i just did i just wasn't interested in meeting any in, any dude that she was with was like you know, she had been with like dope boys and like different things, and I didn't, I didn't rolled up on these dudes. I don't, I don't grab them, grab them yeah. up again. Like yo, like I don't, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and so big brother I, said, yeah. And so I was just like, I really ain't interested in what you got going on with a boyfriend because you don't pick very good boyfriends. <laughs> so, so she's like, oh, he's this, that, but and I'm like, I'm not even really mind paying any attention, and I'm like. Right. Oh, um, so there was like the night where I called, like, that's a whole story right there where I called and left a voicemail and everything. Anyway, they ended up coming to, um, that's a whole nother story about how, how you know, Monica and Brian even came to church in the first place, but they came, she came and she brought Brian and I mean, he was cool. I, he just, I knew he was older than her. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you could just tell. And so he just, he was just respectful. He was just cool. He shook my hand. Um, you know, we was just like, yo, like it was just, it was cool. And I, I and I wasn't interested in knowing too much more because I was like, yo, you know, what she just pick up with this dude? I, I don't really know. Right? right. My I was still in the world. So I just really didn't know what was what. And so yeah. I was just, you know, I shook his hey son, I'm doing this podcast. You might have to go back there with your Oculus. So um I I I uh shook his hand, boom, introduced my he introduced himself, I introduced myself cool blah 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 and then uh monica was like yo maybe we could do music one day oh, or he did one of the two said it and i was like yeah all right <laughs> and because because it, because god told me to stop doing music i didn't know that right. he was stopped for a while yeah but I, I thought that it was a done deal and i don't care what monica or brian say if god said it, it's a wrap right. and so i remember driving home that same day I'm driving home and and uh hearing God say uh um now. Wow. And I was like, now what? Like, and I knew right away he was talking about music. And I was like, dang. And I didn't understand. I was like, oh, I thought I was done. Yeah. And maybe a few weeks later, Brian and Monica, Brian that got baptized, Monica that got baptized, they all, you know. We recorded our first track, me, Brian, Monica, and Wu. We recorded our first track. And I remember writing it and getting done and looking at it and being like, yo, I don't write like this. Yeah. Like, this is like this guy for real. Right. Hey, if you want people to see you in your drawers, bro, they can see <laughs> Crazy. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> hey, this is the uh 
<laughs> this is what it's really like at the crib. Everybody think we just rap. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. Bro. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But uh, but uh, I remember writing the verse, looking at it, and being like, like I was really blown away by what had been written in there because yeah. I was able to see how much I had grown in two years. Like this wasn't. I wasn't writing like just street stuff. This was relatable things, but Holy Spirit inspired all the way right. through. And it blew and what, my mind. What's the name of that first track? Do you remember? Uh, Glory to God. I remember it. I, re <laughs> yeah. I remember the song. I remember the hook. I remember it. Man. So after after y'all come together doing your music that way, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you gotten into music now. You're doing... Did you feel that elevation and that shift? I know you said that you looked at your raps and like, man, that's Holy Spirit. But in the spirit, did you feel a shift happen and take place in your life? Question. No question. It was uh, it was such a joyous time. Man. It was such a joyous time. And, and I and I could be like, yo, it was just fun times. No, it was. But I think the word that best describe it is it was such a joyous time because it was, a, we were a bunch of people who did not look like Come on. we belonged in a church Come on. and we're all young, just happy to be saved. Right. So and, we and I, like that you, I like that you said that because that's the main focus of this podcast, bro, is because a lot of people look at Christian hip hop and they're like, man, they're not Christian people. How can they give people Jesus? They're, they're just, they sound just like the world. You know what I mean? But People don't understand, like, there's so much stuff that I've seen happen at a concert, and people will tell you. I had Justin Vaughn on a couple of days ago, and he yeah. said he went to a he went to a concert, and that's where he got saved from at, at mm -hmm. a Brian T concert. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like, well, they don't understand that even though y'all are rappers, y'all are ministering. It's deep, bro. We were literally just in there throwing beats up. We weren't even buying beats. <laughs> I'm gonna be for real we didn't even know like the whole track stems we were just throwing beats on rapping over these beats making choruses burning them on cds and listening to them we right. were just we were literally that was one of the that, that was a, a real joyous time too because we were just so you could just tell we were literally happy to be saved bro right we were just happy to be saved and we was telling everybody about Jesus. We would go, we would record these songs, we would burn a bunch of CDs and we'd just hand them out to people. Like, yeah. you know, I remember stopping at a, I've uh, been at a stoplight and somebody hearing the music from my car and being like, yo, what's that? Yeah. And I just put my car in park, took the CD, I gave it to him. Like, we were literally like, yo, we're going to spread the name of Jesus and the yeah. love and the joy that comes from serving him through this, the gift and talents that we have, we're going to wrap the gospel and we're going to give it to everyone. Right. And that was literally what we were doing. It would, we would, Wu would get up and everybody on the block, because they, everybody looked up to Wu. And that, that was gonna be my next question, because uh, I know it'd probably be a question better for Brian, but who was, who kind of like, took that kingdom music thing. That was my question for you. Like, when did kingdom music become a thing? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I'll put all that into this because it's all the same. Okay. Wu would in, go and throw rocks at people's windows like, yo, time to go to <laughs> church. Come on now. And you would see us walk into the church 20, 30 deep from all cats from the hood who Man. some of the cats was telling dope the night before. Right. But they walking into the church legitimately in tears at the altar, like wanting some change in their life. Like we was walking into the church like that. I was in a little bit of a different position than them because I was, I was in leadership already. Right. right? They were just coming in. Brian was just coming in. Monica, I was already in leadership. I was preaching and everything already, but, uh, but that's how it would come in. So what would, how everything turned into kingdom music was first of all that was that was never like a plan. Oh really? We were just going to like whatever churches around the city asked us to come and rapping the gospel. That's it. Yeah. Like we were going to these churches and just rapping about Jesus. Like just just little local churches. That's it. Right. And um but 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 we would always 
say like, yo, this is kingdom music. He would just say stuff like that. That's it. This is just music for the kingdom, kingdom music, God's music. But that was just what it was. Um, and that's just what we were doing. And um, so that was that. There was never like a, a plan like, oh, we're going to blow up. We're going right. to be like, we never, we never planned nothing. We yeah. just was safe. Um, I remember one night and you and, and if you ever get an opportunity, you can ask Brian. I remember one night um, uh, I dreamt that we were all on stage. Me, Brian, Monica and Wu yeah. were ministering to a bunch of people right uh, yeah um, but all i saw in the dream was us ministering casting demons out and stuff like that yeah. i didn't i didn't know I, how much music would play into that or what i mean yeah. we were we, i think we were doing music too it's it, it's an old dream i can't remember everything but but i remember telling brian that the next day like yo fam like and he was just like oh yeah he just kind of like yeah and i was just like yo i'm just telling you that's what god showed me that's it right um, so in the midst of that, like we never, we never thought uh, we never had planned. We never knew it would be anything other than us just doing what we do for the Lord. And that was it. And we weren't, content with that. We weren't looking for nothing. We was, we didn't have a shirt to sell. We didn't have a CD to sell all the CDs we did. We just would put money up, burn a hundred CDs and give them out. We right. didn't, have, um, we weren't getting paid honorariums or anything, you know, just wherever they told us to go, we went and we ministered. Um, and that's really what it was. And we were content with that. Right. And that's awesome how you broke that down. I don't want to dive too much into it, but cause I, I want to focus on more of the testimony and your view on, on things. Cause I can sit here and ask you questions for days. Cause I'm a legitimately a legitimate fan of King. King yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but we're going to keep it Antoine here. Cause you, you were, the one that I like, I tell you all the time. I even message to you. People sleep on Antoine, and I tell my wife all the time. People sleep on you, bro, because especially now the music that you're putting out, I, I already knew that like this level of of the way you spitting, I knew you were gonna come here. You know what I'm saying? But they've been sleeping, and I don't honestly, I don't feel like you take music seriously. Like when you get on a track, you you been you play with it a little bit. You know what I'm so, saying? Because because that's what music is. It's fun, right? right? Uh, and that's why when people are like, oh, hey, you just gotta. They just want me to rap the whole Proverbs from one, you know, one to 31, right? And I'm like, yeah, but music's fun too. Like, um, and this is the reason why music's fun. Um, because there's a younger generation, right? That we still want to reach. So right. you're going to have these super, um, super serious songs, like Little Things. Yeah. And then have these super fun songs, like I'm Free. Still all about the gospel, still everything, but two different, completely different places, but serving it, oh, each song serving its own purpose, right? So, yeah, so like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I might rap about what, what's going on right here. I got the water bottle, you know, it's, you know, a lot of that stuff is real time stuff. Right. Flight was rough, so I wrote this on the flight. It was a rough flight. I wrote it on the flight. It was to keep my mind off of the fact that the flight was rough, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, another cipher, I guess. Well, we, I had just did like four ciphers, and I didn't want to do that one. I was, yes. all of the, I was just like, all right, I had another cipher, I guess, right? So it's, 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 uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's relevant to what we're doing, and music is fun. I do, t I do take it serious. Like, I do, want my, I do want the verse to stand out in some sort of way. But uh, yeah, it ain't nothing to be, you know, we're not, we not in competition like we were before. Now it's just about edification and encouragement. Man, come on now. I'm going to tell you right now, you snapped on that kingdom one. That you snapped on that. That's my favorite verse, bro. But uh, when you do music, you know, you talk about how you wrote, how you writing and all that. You travel a lot. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're uh, man, it's, it's hard to see where you're going next because y'all travel a lot. How do y'all yeah. find the downtime in between? Because y'all get off the stage about what? 10 o'clock by the time y'all go eat by the time you get to your room it's probably like 2 30 3 30 in the morning how do y'all find the balance to be able to get y'all's the, the ministry y'all's music the way y'all do and write it so heartfelt you know what i'm saying uh brian will tell you this and i agree with him to a certain degree i just don't have the same uh, uh ability that he has um god writes it on your heart yeah. and the things happen throughout the day um, that's why I say music is rel relative to what's going on, for, especially for me in this, you know, is relative to what's going on. So, uh, you know, Brian doesn't write lyrics. Wow. Um, he's able to just 
you know, God puts it on his heart and he's able to just recite it. I write, it doesn't mean that God's not putting it on my heart just because I'm not freestyling it. I write them. Well, I type them. Right. But, uh, uh, so, um, I think that you, you have to be intentional because everything in life is balanced. Right. You intentional, like everybody in my city knows because everybody lives here. Uh, Brian lives here. Brian and Monica, of course, live here. Z lives here. Uh, Drew lives here. Um, we got a bunch of different brothers that live right here in the same city. And um, everybody knows like, yo, Antoine doesn't leave a house, right? So <laughs> I, I, I don't really get out too much, but, uh, you know, uh, God will convict me when the brothers call like, yo, come through. So um, being intentional about your time, um, usually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is me out ministering or whatever city that we're in. Right. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I like to spend time at home. Now, uh, um, I might take a Monday out to go jump in the studio a Monday night. And I'm, and I'm not like I used to be where I was able to spend all night in the studio. I'm intentional. Like, okay, what are we doing? We doing this? We doing that? Okay, give me the beat. Let me knock it out. Hey, I love y'all. Y'all have fun with the rest. I'm going back home, right? So I find balance because I value my time with my wife and my children. Right. Even if we ain't doing nothing, we just in the house. I value being here with them. Um, I, I, just the other day, I'm laying back in the bed. I'm kind of messing with my phone. My kids are in there. My wife is in there. They're all laughing and joking. And I just was like, yo, I enjoyed this time with y'all. And they're like, we ain't doing nothing. I'm like, yeah, but I enjoyed this time of y'all being just being in here with me. Um, so uh, so I value that and I have to find balance. I also have a 16 year old going to be 17 that lives in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I have to make times to get on my get on the plane and fly back home and spend time with her a week with her okay. so i'm just intentional about making sure every area of my life is getting the, the proper attention that it it needs to to nurture uh, every relationship and every aspect um right. so so the music it just comes because we really do it like what i mean by that is like we really like if we get when we get locked in you know i i I thought that it was normal for people to write a verse in 15 minutes. Wow. I found I found out that it wasn't. I found out it takes people hours and days to write verses. Yeah. Well, I'm blessed enough that it takes me 15 to 20 minutes to write a verse, sometimes wow. 10 minutes, you know, maybe 30 at the most. So that when me and Brian get in the studio, he writes like that too. So we're able to just bam, like, so we're able to knock music out in a fast, at a fast pace because God gave us that gift to where we can write like that. So most of the verses that you hear none, that have taken 15, 20 minutes to write. And so, you know, we had, we had weeks where there was nothing going on and me and Brian did 18 songs in a week. Oh, so, wow. you know, it just depends, right? Are we in that season or are we not? So we make time for what we need to make time for. So now leads me to my next question about up and coming artists. You touched on it a little bit. So I had to, I had to kind of tell you that we're going to get that a little bit, but what do you what kind of encouragement do you have for those that feel like they can start in ministry and not receive any type of discipleship not submit to anything you know what i'm saying as far as oh man i, I submit to god most god. of it don't, most of it don't last I, i'm not gonna name no names but i mean people can go look up names of people who walked away from faith stopped rapping back backslid most of it don't last because the foundation is on is is uh, rocky. Come on up. It's not, the, the foundation is the foundation was music. If that's your foundation, it won't last. Come on. You might still do music. It won't. It won't hold the same weight that it did before. Right. I don't. I really don't even. To be honest with you, understand it. And it's no disrespect to anybody. I don't mean any disrespect. I rock with everybody. In fact, it's crazy because me and Dayton were on the phone last night. We talked for like an hour and a half. And part of the conversation was about this, was about people just, you know, jumping in to jump in. And, and we had this conversation and I, and, you know, because Dayton just recently got uh, ordained. Yeah. And yeah. He said it, he people, focusing more on pastoral shit. And this is what people don't know. This dude was walking with the Lord for a while before right. he started Christian rap. He always rapped because it was always in him. But right. before he stepped all the way in to God over money, he had been growing and being discipled in different things. This is the other thing. I, I, for two years, I didn't touch music and, and I got discipled. I'm 35 years old. 
I'm still being discipled today. I'm mm -hmm. not understanding. Oh, you got to figure it out. You don't answer to nobody. You have no accountability. You have no covering. Nobody can tell you anything. I only answer to God. That's crazy because if you go if you go in the Bible, even uh, 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 um, Moses had his uh, uh, father. I want to say it was Moses. It was Moses or Abraham. I can't remember. I always mix them up. But they had their father-in-law Jethro, Jethro, and God put the, God put Jethro in their life to organize the things because they had so many different things going on. Wow. So what do you mean? He had accountability. Everybody has accountability. They have a covering. You talking about, I only answer to God right away. You're prideful fam. And Come to be on. honest, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, link up with you and do nothing because it's only a matter of time before you fall. I don't want my name put on. So the reality is a lot of people need to make sure that they take the time out to be disciple, to have accountability, grow in the Lord. The music ain't going nowhere, fam. It's right. not. And the reality is, if God has called you to it, then you don't really have to worry about what it's going to do because God's going to make it do whatever he wants it to do anyway. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people inbox me and they go, yo, how can I get put on? And I go, read, fast, pray, seek the Lord's face, get a relationship with God, and then he'll do the rest after that. And yeah. they'd be like, yeah, he put me on. I'm like, nah, there is none of that. Right. None of that. Like, I don't, I, I don't have another answer for you. I don't. It's, it's your relationship with God, how much time you spend with him, reading, praying, fasting, learning, praying for direction, and then you go do music. I don't even touch music before we pray. I don't even touch music before we read. I don't even touch music before we do any of those things. And everybody around me is the same way. We got to pray it in before we do anything because we want it to be intentional. Right. And see, you talk about when you pray before you get on anything. How do yeah. you your discernment like how does Antoine say all right you got I'm sure your DMs be full on Facebook Instagram all that like hey I want you on a feature hey I want you to how do you use your discernment on whether you say even if the track is hard you know what I'm saying like when do you say nah I, I can't do that so so I so let me follow all of that by saying that I'm imperfect right I'm following all that by saying that I'm imperfect and there have been times where people be like yo uh can I pay to pay to get you get a feature from you and they catch me in my broke day, and I'm like, heck yeah, send it up. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah. I'm being, I'm being for real. I'm being honest because I am imperfect. I don't do that anymore. It doesn't matter what my situation is, but I had times where I was there, like, all right, yeah, yeah, I got you. Right. right. I I, I want to know who you're connected to. Right. You you got you do you have a covering? You have a, a church that you go to, like, who knows about you? Who can vouch for you? Right. Who can who 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 can I hit up and they're, and they're gonna tell me that yeah you a, you a godly man with godly character? I ain't talking about you perfect, right? But I'm talking about you a godly man with godly character. Like who you connected to? Then now you know what I'm saying. A lot of times we build. I like to build with people. Um, and then and then from there we go we go into the whole. Uh, then we go into the music maybe. Like all right now, yeah. Let me hear some stuff. How long you been doing this? How long you been walking with the Lord? Right. And then I'll pray about it. Like man, like I. Uh, should I do this or should I not? Because if I'm just doing it for money, I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I still do charge for features because I mean, it, I got to take the time out. I got to write it. I got to go record it. I got to go spend time. I got to fix my ad libs. I got to turn this down, pick this back up, go back here, go back. So it is time. But, uh, but before we even get to that, I want to know, are you connected with somewhere? Are you? Do you have a cover? Do you have accountability? Who can vouch for you? All those different things. I changed my criteria a while ago because it wasn't about money no more. It was more about uh, it was more about people actually having a relationship, and I don't got to worry about you backsliding three weeks after we drop a track together. You know what I'm saying? See, and I re I think discipleship is is important. Also, I know. You know to my pastor, he disciples me, and you know I let him know. I said, hey, Dad, I'm fin I want to get in part of this program, and I'm I'm part of the KMF discipleship also. Man. Shout out Fred, you know what I mean? I'm on Mondays. Man. But uh yeah, I believe discipleship and accountability is a must, especially in the season that I'm walking through. I shared a little bit uh, with you in in the uh you know when we talk, but this yeah. season I need brothers around me. A lot of brothers, you know what I'm saying? But as far as being accountable. Now let's let's lead into something cuz I know I, I gave I told you an hour and man, this has been fun. But honorariums bro we got to touch on that there's like three topics i want to touch on before we leave sure. and then we got like 15 minutes but yeah. 
honorariums a lot that man that's a line that draws a man that, there's half of people like man why are you charging for the gospel half yeah, of them yeah. like i understand it but when they say they understand about honorarium when it's time to give an honorarium on their part then they don't understand it so yeah, yeah. what's your, what's your view on that man i mean that's that's it's, like a uh, so first things first that has to be established and that people have to know i have never received the honorarium for the gospel come on now let me just make that clear and some people will be like but wait you get paid to to minister yeah let me let me let me clear that up if i walk outside right now and i run into a man on the street do you think i'm gonna say i would give you the gospel <laughs> but i don't know if you can afford my honorarium right now. right if my interactions with people is teasing in the gospel all day, every single day. I go to the men's home, the men's home, the Rise Discipleship home. Oh, right. I teach at the Rise Discipleship home. I don't get paid for that. Okay. I've gone to different places and done different things and preached where I have not gotten paid. But here's the other side. It's crazy to me that people can't see this, but it's cool. I know that there's some, it don't matter what I say right now, I won't convince some people, that's fine. Uh, but you want me to um, leave my home and most people cannot afford to fly me out of Abilene, Texas, okay? So I have to drive two and a half hours to Dallas, get on a plane, fly to whatever city you, you're in, in a hotel, or now I'm away from my family, where right. I tell you I value that time the most. Right. I'm away from my family. I'm in a new city and on a whole other side. Go up, do whatever amount of long set you tell me to do because you want me to do music. Right. So I do music, I preach, I do this, I spend time. I ain't one of them cats that do my thing and leave. I spend time with people. Um, and then you say, oh, you want me to pay you for that time? Yeah, I would. It'd be nice if you pay because I look at it from my scope and everybody wants to look at it the same. If I had somebody come here and do the same thing, I want to take care of them. Why? Because I value the time that they have away from their family. I value their time in general. I value their gift and talent. I value that they took the time out to do this. And yes, I do want to bless you financially as well. Yeah. Now, if you have a donkey to give to me or whatever the case nowadays, then let's figure it out. I don't know what to do with a donkey. <laughs> I can figure it out. But but nowadays we we show our appreciation. Listen, when people when, when people die in somebody's family, what do you do a lot of times? Hey, listen, we, we started this little fund to bless them financially. Why? Right? Just to be a blessing to them. Give them some level of comfort, right? In this time of grieving. We do it for we do it for all sorts of different things, right? But for some reason, people feel like, ah, I'm, you, you're getting paid to preach the gospel. No, no, sir. No, I'm not. Just for my time. And so for me, that's where I stand on. We could even go into the Bible about it. It talks about the wages. It, it, there's even a part in there where Paul says, I am entitled to compensate, no, I but I not to take it. But I am in my right to take it if I want. Right. So for those who do want to take it, Amen. For those that don't want to take it, amen. I don't think neither one of you guys are wrong. Me right. personally, I'm traveling around the world. And if you go look at Brian's schedule, how could he go to all the, how could he even pay his mortgage right. if he was was just doing it for free? A hundred events in a year for free. And how? I'm so uncomfortable because I seen y'all one time when uh, I happened to get to uh, pass y'all when y'all were on your way to that sound of light. And man, y'all was packed up. Like everybody was asleep. You know what I'm saying? So I knew it was uncomfortable because y'all yeah. on the move a lot. Yeah. And so and so there's that. And it's like, and, and then and then we do a lot of stuff for free too that people don't see. There's a a lot of things that go on behind closed doors that they'll never see. And that they don't care, they don't even really care about. They just want to just what we have going on. And to be honest with you, it was the reason why we started Kingdom Builders on the kingdommusic.org. And why we do the merch on there and why we, because we want to make a certain amount of money 
to where we can do everything for free. That's our heart. But right yeah. now, we don't got enough money to do that. Yeah, right? Set up. Yeah. So now, until we get there, you know, that's where we at. Next question we're gonna we're gonna go to is the unity in the body of CHH. We're gonna touch on that a little bit. And and I, I love I, I love the opportunity to be able to interview you because you're so passionate about the unity and about how other brothers in, in CHH or in just in the body in general, you know, be indirect when they have issues with somebody. I loved your live when you went when you went live and, and we talked yeah, about yeah. it. But how do you feel as the body, as the unity is when you were doing it when you first started to where it's at now as far as unity amongst CHH artists, whether it be wherever. So so when I first, so when we first uh, started doing this, um, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was, I was like, y'all, man, a bunch of brothers worshiping God together, rapping together, bam, bam, we all build it. And then we got invited to South by Southwest the very first time ever. And a lot of those artists treated us like garbage. Wow. And I was like, Oh, like, I was like, yo, it's kind of weird because I, I figured that they would embrace, you know, new brothers, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it was the politics of it, right? Yeah. Because they were like, yo, why are all those people at Kingdom Music Table? Who are they? I'm this person, right? And yeah. so I realized that that's actually just a part of this walk in general. Because the Bible lets us know that, there, that this type of stuff will always go on. There'll be people that that's trying to build up and come together and there's going to be people that's doing their own thing it just is what it is i'm on the i'm um uh i'm in a space where um i really want to bring brothers together right. um, it's been dope to actually fellowship with 1k few to fellowship with Hovey, to fellowship with stephen malcolm to fellowship with these and i'm naming these guys because we can act like we can act like there's not like two different parts of CHH if we want, or we could just be realistic, right? These are guys who are more mainstream, who are more, uh, these are guys that are more listened to or whatever the case might be. And then you have the Kingdom Musics, you have the, and I don't want to, and God Over Money is pretty big too, but you have the God Over Monies, you have these, the, 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 um, hog mobs who are kind of looked at like as a little bit more, uh, extreme when it comes to the gospel. Uh, I look at it like this. I look at it as wherever God has us, um, walk in that lane and you can't stop the vision, but you can, you can, uh, uh, uh stop what your role is in causing division. Right. Come on. If you're playing role in that, then you need to stop, you step back and check yourself. I've been uh, guilty of that in the past because I feel like it's them and it's us. I feel like God's been bridging the gap together and I'm able to meet these guys and understand that their mission is the same. It's just ran differently. Right, That's right. And so for me, it's like, where's, what is my role in bringing people together? And so that's my goal every single time. So a lot of times misunderstandings is what is rooted in division. Instead of you being man enough to have a conversation with another man, you sub post the sub subliminal message, or talk to talk about it to other people or other things, causing more and more division. When actually, that's the opposite of what God tells us to do. So for me, um, I think that there's a little bit more unity than it was before. Um, but I think it's something that we have to continuously work on. Um, you know, in order for us to get to that point where there's just complete unity in CHH. Will there ever be complete unity? I, I doubt that because you just got, everybody has their own view on it, but I, I am all for us being united with the same mission. Right. And to piggyback that right before, uh, what do you think people can do as far as being able to build, do you feel like social media plays a big part? Do you think the same problems that CHH have now, they had back in the day, but social media didn't focus, like there wasn't social media, so how could everybody find out? I don't think they had the same problems back in the day. And this no. is why I, I don't think they did because they knew that they needed each other in order to grow this thing because it was a new thing, wow. right? Yeah. Uh, and they were actually ostracized by most churches. They were the devil, according to most churches. They were the, this is demonic. This is not right. God. We don't want this near us. Where we're actually received a little bit more now than we ever have been. Yeah. Do I think the media 
um, plays a part 100% because everybody has to give their opinion on every single thing. When sometimes, you know, it's the old saying that your, your mom said, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Yeah. A lot of times people just need to not say nothing at all because they're, they're, you're, most of people's opinions on different Christian hip hop artists is based on just this little bit of time that they see them on the screen. That's it. They don't know anything about them. They don't know anything about their family. I saw somebody say the other day, man, uh, man, Brian done changed so much. And I'm like, sir, you've never met Brian before. How do you know if he's changed or not? You don't know him personally. Like your, your view on him is based on what you have seen on a screen for a certain amount of time. You don't know him. You right. have no relationship with him, but you can go online and say, look at him. He ain't the same. He changed. Here's a case in point. Years ago, when we first started, there was a, uh, um, uh, remember the clip full of hallelujah song? If you, if, I don't know if you go back that far. Uh, remember the, um, in Jesus name, I say, amen. Amen. Remember that song? We shot the clip full of hallelujah song video. We shot the in Jesus name video. Within the same week, we recorded 18 songs. This is what I'm talking about. We recorded 18 songs. We shot like seven, eight videos. Wow. We dropped it in Jesus' name video. People were like saying whatever they were saying about it. We dropped the clip for the Hallelujahs video. And what they said was, man, bro, they're already changing. It wow. was shot in the same week. We were the same people. Nothing different. We shot, we recorded the songs the same week and everything, nothing had changed or anything, but people were like, oh, they changed. This is what I'm saying. The perspective that people have through a, a camera or a, 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 through a phone, through a computer is so skewed, they don't even know you. They have no idea who you are. And they, they, they go on these tangents and these rants about you. Just the other day, a lady said, I had the opportunity to meet brother Antoine Hill and it was dope. I was like, man, that's dope, sis. Another lady says, well, I just went through his Facebook. I didn't see enough scriptures or enough things. Uh, he, he stuff on, so it's like, and that's why people be like, I'll be like, man, I block people. They'd be like, dang, you shouldn't block them. You should love them. I'll be like, listen, I block people because a lot of times they're just on their two cause division to get you knocked off, to make you feel some type of way or belittle you when actually their, their view of you is very skewed because they only have this much view of me and I'm and I'm and I'm actually have this many different things about me that every that people that really know me know about me so right. yes so, so social media definitely contributes this is and, this has been uh, awesome bro man I still got a lot of things I want to ask you about go ahead want to go longer we can if not it's cool if you want to cut All it right. off hey now nah, cool if you're good with it I just want to be sensitive of your time I like to be if I'm good right now I'm uh, good well, now I this get some food in a little bit but I'm straight though go ahead uh, let me know this question right here, it piggybacks off of what people say about, like you said, they change. How many times has it been hard for you? And you know, you can answer, you, you don't have to, but how many times has it been hard for you because you have to, you have to take criticism on behalf of Kingdom Music and them feeling like y'all, I'm gonna say y'all's evolved, y'all evolved into a ministry, full blown ministry. Y'all are not only rappers anymore. Y'all like, B, he's a pastor, and people don't see that. But he's actually a, a pastor. He's ordained and everything. But they see y'all as rappers, so y'all they, they play y'all from that standpoint. How many times have Antoine had to kill the flesh? Because you know, overall, you're going to stand up for your brother, bro. That's your brother. Outside of music, outside of ministries, that's your brother-in-law. Y'all grew up together. Hey. Well, spent a lot of time together. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to keep it 1,000. Straight to uh, it. <laughs> just the other day, just the other day, I, I hit a brother up like, yo, you wildin' out, you need to chill. Like, you saying some stuff that you don't know nothing about, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Hit my hit my line, we can have a conversation about it. Right. Um, he texted me, said, I'll call you later. It never happened, but it's all good, though. I, I don't hold no, but I'm saying, like, how many times? A lot, because I can take a lot of, of, of what people say about me. I'll hit them with an LOL and block right away. You say stuff about Brian, you say stuff about my wife, my children, which I ain't had that happen up to this point, thank God, because I don't know what I, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, you say stuff about brothers like that, that I know, know, 
uh, I had to bite my tongue a lot, but that's a part of it, uh, killing my flesh every single day. And a lot of it, I just block people because, and that's the other part, I block people because it's taken away from my piece of where I'm at, right? It's not like, oh, just screw them. It's like, I can't, I don't know if, if this conversation keeps going, if I'm gonna respond the right way. So it happens to me more than I'm, I'm proud to say. Now, accountability. How many yeah. times have your accountability buddy, you know, called you and be like, say, man, you got to, you, that's fine. You wilding, you bugging, bro. You, you got to take a step back. Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of it. I, I, it just is what it is because I am passionate about stuff and I do have an opinion on stuff. So right. yeah, sometimes it might come off a certain way. And then a lot of times posts and different things are, might be interpreted one way and, and but I didn't mean it that way and it got right. misinterpreted. And then I see people's response. I'll take it down and be like, dang, I didn't even mean it like that, right? A lot of times, that's why, that's why I'll go live a lot of times because I want to clear up what I typed out and it didn't come out the right way. And now I can actually say it. Uh, you know, that's why a phone conversation is better than a text message, right? Uh, so no, my main my main accountability is Brian. He's usually the one that hits me up like, bruh. You know, right. you, and I'm kind of his main accountability too. Especially so our drives from Abilene, to Dallas is where we have a lot. Of so, yeah. So, with, with that being said, man, like when when you do take things down, do you ever get them people to be like, "Oh, he ain't standing on what? Oh, because he erased this, he don't stand on what he says." Yeah, you know, but you get that about that. yeah, but I don't care about that. That's stupid. That's actually that's like a dumb way of thinking because it's like maybe I second guess what I put and was like, okay, I don't want that to be. And then a lot of times I'll delete stuff because people are arguing. Right. On this, and I'll be like, nah, this is actually causing more problems than help. Let me take this down. And then people be like, oh, you're not standing on your word. I don't, bruh. Anybody that know me know I stand ten toes down on what I believe in, 100. percent But I'm not with. I'm not willing to fight all those fights all the time, especially when I can't really type everything that I want to type out and explain it in a way that sounds intelligent uh, at all because I'm just typing, uh, you know, on my phone, right? So a lot of times I'll be like, you know what? It's not worth the fight. It's not worth the battle. I don't want to have this 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 debate. I don't want people to, to, to be debating it. I'm going to delete this, right? So, yeah, so nah, I, I, I don't care about that. Now, let's just go over the spiritual warfare real quick. I want to tap on that a little bit because I, I love your opinions on, on a lot of things because you're direct, bro. So mm -hmm. when, with you being having to travel, you go into different areas. When you go into different areas, it's different regions. You know, a lot yeah. of different principalities are, are in operation in different yeah. areas. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all go, y'all fly out to places and then being, being people know that y'all coming maybe a month before y'all get there. So yeah. just like people say that, you know, preparation and all this, we got to prep ourselves to be able to withstand the enemy. There's somebody I, on the other side that's fighting against y'all. So yeah. what kind of, spiritual warfare being on the road have you encountered that really stands oh, out to um i've had uh i had a, a small church in oklahoma one time uh where i walked in they were re super religious uh they they went in on me about me having a hat on and all kind of different things and um i was just like all right i'll take my hat off we'll do it whatever whatever but my wife was re got really really sick inside of it and the moment we left out of the building, she was fine. And wow. so that's one of the spiritual warfare battles. We've dealt with witches who actually come like, yo, we're, we're coming to, you know, disrupt what you're doing. Actual witch, which is kind of, kind of crazy. Um, we dealt, we deal with, uh, what's a, what's a, a spiritual warfare one that's really big that happened. Um, I'm, if I'm really, really honest with you, I've, I've, I've dealt with a lot of them. One of them that's recently reoccurring is um, there's a certain region that will go to a certain state in, in that area that we'll go to. And there's these guys that come and they set up their whole thing and they discredit what we do the whole time. They stand out there and they talk down and discredit what we do. And we're false preachers. We're wolves. We're this, we're that. And uh, that's their whole uh, goal. They say that their goal is for people to hear the real gospel, but the reality is it's not true. Um, enemies using them. They don't believe it, but you know, yeah. the enemy. Uh, so that's one of the things that happens a lot. Uh, we get death threats sometimes. Um, you know, people say they're going to kill us. Uh, we get, uh, 
man, bro, we get, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. If you're not spiritually um, um, uh, mature enough to deal with it, um, it will probably scare you. Right. Um, but, um, you know, we just know it comes with the territory. But we get a lot of, like, different, we have people come to try to disrupt um, services a lot. Um, and particularly witches, really. Like, that's kind of one of the big things. So saying, man, We ain't messing with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, so, we, so we go into, so we definitely, that's why we pray before, we pray after recovery. Right. Um, a lot of times what people don't realize is that they'll, they'll see an altar call and they'll be like, why didn't Brother Antoine come down to pray? Because Brian will be going out to pray and I'll be standing up somewhere praying over him while he's praying. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a position of an armor bear. I mean, you yeah. got to so, Yeah, so, so, so uh, just because we know it's real, it's a real thing. So we, you know, we just try, we just try to equip ourselves and be ready. That's why fasting is important, different things to be ready for that stuff. Come on now. And then one yeah. thing that's, uh, when when y'all go on stage, I've always I've read in the comments, and when when y'all do shows, people are like, "Why do they all go up in a group?" Why? Yeah, you know, like, have you ever gotten pulled to the side and like, "Hey man, why y'all do that?" Or you know, because I've I've, heard, I've I've been at a I've been at a show where I overheard people talking and they're like, "Oh man, that's look, they think they're special, like a gang or something." Look how they go on. The stage. So this this is the thing. This is Brian's fault, first of all. This is. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of, this is what people need to know. I pray that people really see this part. This, uh, th there's a lot of brothers that are connected to us that are just brothers of ours, right? right? And um, um, Brian doesn't want to leave anybody out. Yeah. So it's not like, hey, we're going to go up here. And nah, if Brian's doing a hype song first, he'll go, hey, y'all come up here and let's just have fun. Right. So it's not to be like, oh, we got our entourage. It's let the brothers come up to have fun. This is what people don't realize. A lot of times you won't even see me up jumping and stuff. I'm in the back, like letting the brothers who don't always get to come have fun on stage with them. And I'm just back there rocking. You know what I mean? So see that first it's, yeah, it's not even not, it's not even that, you know, yeah, yeah, even that day we were shooting a video in Houston. Like, I'm like, hey, y'all go get in the video. Right. I'm in the background, right? right. It's it's to include everybody. It's not an entourage thing. It's to include everybody, let them have fun, enjoy themselves. And then, you know, as Brian goes into the ministering part, if people pay attention, uh, that's when people start leaving the stage. It's like, hey, come up here, we're gonna have fun, and then we're gonna get right. So it's not, it's not like a gang thing or anything like that. <laughs> it's literally that Brian wants to include everybody for people to come up and have fun because you know a lot of people is just like oh can we come up with you and he's like yeah come on let's go have let's go have fun together so it's not nothing else really so let, I'm gonna fit in, I'm not gonna take too much more of your time what Are happened you with the juice box confessions and all that people want to so, know what happened to the juice box confessions so juice box confessions is still a thing but every single story that I have told on juice box is um real it's a real story every single story has been a real story i haven't made up anything i have a this is really what it is i have a very very terrible mind that was beat down by drugs for a long time i have to sit back and remember stories that have happened right. in my phone right now are different stories that i am going to tell but i wanted to accumulate enough stories to where i could be consistent with telling the stories Right. So I just have a bunch written up, uh, a bunch of different topics written down in my phone so that I can build up enough to where I can be consistent about it. And I'm going to add into a segment of the podcast. So it's some, it's just sitting there waiting for me to do it. Okay. That's all. Yeah. So what's coming up for, for Antwo, man? What, what can the people expect coming from me? Because we touched on where you're at. I like to let yeah. people know where you, where you are now. Where working, you on that, working on a new album already because I plan on dropping wow. two albums. Year. that's the plan uh uh we'll see if we get there but i'm planning to drop two albums this year um so working on an album right now i was actually in the studio last night with you um working on um the podcast i'm just working on the camera right now so if anybody if it's on anybody's heart and they want to help me with a camera let me know because they ain't cheap but i'm trying to get a camera i want the quality to be good because i want it to i want the podcast to be something that i do every week and it's of high quality right. and um you know, it's relevant to what's going on. Uh, you know, I want it to be funny and I want it to be serious. I want it to be a little bit of everything, but I want to have fun. Do you have it. the name of it? 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, I do, but I don't because I'm going through a bunch of different names. Okay. Right. Uh, I've had it, then switch it, had it, then switch it, had it, then switch it. Um, but I have a lot of relationships with a lot of CHH artists um, that are like, no, it's going to be dope, man. And so I want to bring on, um, you know, we even have uh, something where we're going to, I don't want to reveal everything because I don't right, want right, 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 right. to steal like, this idea and just run with it. So but we have different artists on um, different things and um, won't just be artists, be a little bit of everything. So uh, working on um, podcasts, uh, working on the, the albums um, and uh, and just still doing um, ministry right now. Um, Brian's album's getting ready to come out. So a lot of what people don't know is that um, um, when Brian, when, the, when a lot of Kingdom Music Artists album comes out, uh, I'm one of the people behind the, 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 behind the scenes that's trying to help to uh, coordinate um, rollouts and hey, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? How are we going to promote this? How are we going to market this? How are we going to put that there? Can we put some money over here? Can we put some money over there? All the little things. And so I'm one of the people that's in the background helping with those different things. So even when people ain't, don't see me doing music, I am still doing ministry literally every single day. So, so that's kind of where, where I'm at with it, uh, with everything right now. That's where I'm at right now. Man, when, you, when y'all going to put a storefront out here in Houston, man? Man, you know what? Uh, it just depends on how this storefront goes. You know, the, the reason why this storefront was easy to, easier to do is because we actually purchased a print shop. And that oh. just the front part of the print shop and so um shout out to poncho he had a good idea he said yo we can make this into a storefront and so that's how it happened so maybe we do put one in houston i don't really i don't really know uh i don't know what we're doing with that but you know right now we're just you know focused on the print shop you know we're letting people know if they want to get their shirts printed that's what we do at kpm um we we so it's print. not just uh focused on kmf products it's oh no 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 okay, okay. i didn't know that for a school one of the schools uh over there we print for the fire department over there um we print for a, a bunch of other people but we print for um victory church and um and fort worth we print for different churches and um you know if you're if, if somebody some uh, a person that wants to find out if maybe they can get they want their stuff printed with kpm they can hit us up and we can give them a quote and if they like it we can print it we can print it for them we we're, we're not either so it's cool I didn't, I didn't know that i thought it was just based off y'all's merch and stuff nah 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 we just do i mean we we have a lot of merch so we do right. a lot of there uh you know but you know we do merch for other people though. well man i do appreciate your time and touching on these topics man thank you for yes. setting up the time i know you got what you're, you're gonna be in washington next right i'll be in, I, I fly, actually fly to washington thursday morning i'll be in uh and uh, the event is on Friday. There's a two-day event on Friday and Saturday in Yakima, Washington. It'll be me, Triple R, Brother uh, Marcus Rogers. Uh, we'll all be there on, excuse me, on uh, Friday and Saturday this weekend. Uh, Jay Diamond and, and Triple R, I know they were talking about. And, they wanted people to know. So yeah, uh, shout out. And let me shout out too. I mean, just because this is who I am. Um, this 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 weekend on the 29th, Brian um, Zanti serve uh karen a bunch of brothers uh santiago um i if i miss you it's not on purpose but all those brothers will be out there they'll be doing service with a purpose that morning so right. service with is actually hitting the streets feeding the homeless doing all those different things man the, the what we should be doing and then saturday i want to say saturday night um they're doing yeah. a con as well so uh, the, uh, <coughs> after ernesto Perez, he, uh, we actually locked arms we'll be uh the podcast awesome. will be out there helping with it in the morning okay. So, then, I'm, uh, I'm, so I'm grateful for Kingdom Music because I used to be like, dang, I want to be here. I want to be there. And as I matured, I realized like it's so awesome that I'm in Washington because I wanted to be in the Houston event, uh, right. but I was already booked in Washington. But I think it's so dope, though, that I'll be in Washington ministering while, you know, the brothers would be in Houston ministering. And then we have other brothers that are connected that be in different cities all over the place. And it's like it's dope because it's like we get to hit all these different regions at the same day, at the same time, ministering. Right. And I, I see, think, I see the Santiago's. They be on it, bro. They, they be everywhere too. They be everywhere. They be everywhere. <laughs> so thank you, man, and, and shout out to everybody tuning in today. Shout out uh, Antoine for being on the show. Separating the time. I know you're very busy. So yeah. thank y'all, man. Thank you. Caught me on a good night. Right? I'm just ain't doing nothing but about to eat and play some Xbox. <laughs> and, I, and I always talk to my wife, and I tell everybody it's funny because when the first time I was gonna bring you on, the computer crashed. And you yeah. waited a whole hour, like, man, we can still run this. And yeah. by 8 o'clock, like, nah, man, we can't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Yeah. But yeah. I appreciate it, man. And everybody stay tuned because on the 29th, also, we got a podcast. The Get Straight Tour will be on the 29th at DJ Kool-Aid's Benefit. We will be at Crux Ministry. So if y'all not doing nothing, come out there. You know, we're going to be out there. It's going to be the World Rejects. Yeah. Um, I think a few other people stroll and, and all them. But if, if y'all out there, man, come out there. DJ Overflow will be out there. DJ uh, Overdose. Y'all come chop it up with us, man. Uh, the details are on the flyer. I'm sure you can find it on the page. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all. And we, and the podcast will be with the outreach also with the Get, Southeast Get Rap Church. I think that's how you pronounce yep. uh, yep. it. Yep. We're going to be out there in the morning serving. So if y'all want to donate any hygiene products or anything yeah. with the podcast, or I know my church is locking arms with them also. So we'll be out there. I think we'll be out at, uh, man, I can't remember the name of the church. But I know it's by U of H. Be out there at 8 o'clock to bag. And then at 11 o'clock. We'll be headed out to Tent City to hand out all the hygiene products to everybody. And then by two o'clock, it's back. What it's about. Amen. So, yeah, we're going to be locking arms with them. So shout out to y'all for tuning in. Thank you for the extra time, Antoine. If you, yeah, I'm going to end it on live, but if you can stay on just for like two more minutes, that's it. All right, cool. all right shout out Facebook. Thank you. And catch it on the YouTube. We'll be on, I'll upload it here later on tonight.